All right, that song's called Gratitude, in case you're wondering. Um, it just speaks volumes. Uh, let's just be honest, it does. Um, because when we look at ourselves in place of our relationship with God, there's honestly nothing, nothing we can say, nothing we can do that would justify um, anything that we could try to give to God after all that he has done for us. There's nothing we can, but we can praise him. Um, we can sing a hallelujah. Um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I got goosebumps. Um, just just listening to some of you sing, just listen to the words of that. Um, you know, like I said, you know, God is here. Uh, God is here. He's in this room with us right now. His spirit here with us. Um, he's ready to ready to make himself real to you. He's ready for you to encounter him tonight. Are you ready for that? Um, are you ready for that? So we're going to keep going in our series um, just on thing, all things new. Okay, just to give you a review, kind of recap, you know, let's do this real, real fast. Okay, we talked in week one about the new life that we have through Jesus Christ. Um, it's a brand new life. Our old life is gone. Our sins, our problems, our mistakes, they're all washed away through the blood of Jesus. Um, does that mean we will, will be perfect? Absolutely not. But that means that our sins are, are forgiven. The past, present, future sins are all forgiven through the relationship with Jesus. We talked about uh, the new spirit that we have, the Holy Spirit, who's there to guide us, to give us strength, um, to give us power, love, self-discipline. We now have that power. Um, the power that raised Jesus from the dead comes through the Holy Spirit. Uh, we have that power. We have that spirit <clears throat> living within us. We've got to tap into that. We're going to talk about our guide, right? the Word of God. It's there for us. Every day, ready for us um, to dig into it, ready to speak to us, ready to, to help us. Um, and it will help us with every situation that we ever have to face in life. We just have to use it. And we talked about the new privilege that we have of prayer. We get to go straight to God. Okay, We don't have to rely on a priest um, or someone else like you used to have to in Old Testament times. Through the, through the, the death and resurrection of Jesus, we get to go straight to the throne of God. Um, and that is a huge, huge privilege. Um, um, and that's what he wants us to do. He wants us just to talk to him multiple times just throughout the day. Just have that conversation like you would with a friend right next to you. Because he really is. He's right next to you. He's right there with you. Um, inside of you. So utilize that privilege of prayer. And then we talked about the hope that we have. The hope, the hope that we can face no matter what this world throws at us. In the present life. In the future. Even in death. Uh, we have hope. Because we have salvation through Jesus Christ. We don't have to worry about hell. We don't have to worry about any of that negative stuff. Um, we have hope through Jesus. And last week we looked at our relationships. Uh, relationships with people, relationships with family, relationships all over the place. And, and, and how that has changed. With Jesus, everything is made new. And everything is made better. And everything um, has a chance to do amazing things. Um, if we allow God to, to come in and to be a part of, the, of those relationships. And how sometimes, you know what? Even people as close to us, like our family, they can be they can be mad, they could be jealous, they could be upset when we give our lives to Jesus, um, you know. But you know, it's just it's part of life. There's going to be friends who are going to walk away from you because you have a faith in Jesus. If they do that, they were never really a friend to begin with, um, you know. So life is going to be difficult with some of that, uh, but. Uh, God will never leave you. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. He will always be there for you, um, and he will help you. In the end, what do we say? In the end, we have victory. Because in the end, we win no matter what. In the end, you know, we get to stand before Jesus. He's going to say, welcome home. And so come on in and enjoy your eternal reward. Um, so uh, we have that. So and then this week, we're looking at our new family, the church. Not that you have, not that your your current family ever goes away okay it's just you now have a bigger extended family and okay? the church itself is your family where does this come from uh, this comes from acts chapter 2 we kind of talked about this a little bit on sunday if you were here uh, but acts chapter 2 um, this is a powerful powerful section this is the beginning of the church as you and i know it this is after jesus has ascended into heaven um, and the disciples now are going they went from people who ran at Jesus's crucifixion and his death they ran they scattered 
they all came back together. And when Jesus appeared to them, um, boy, they got they got bold. They got confident. They got powerful because they realized they knew how good God was before, but then they realized how amazing God was when Jesus came back to life and stood in their presence and, and ate with them and talked with them and, and still continued to preach after that. So this is right after that. Okay, Acts chapter 2. It says, Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day. Okay, catch this. That day. Not that week, not that month, not that year. We'd all be happy if we had 3,000 people come to know Jesus in a year or even a decade. That should be perfectly honest. But in one day, 3,000 people in all followed Jesus, gave their life to Jesus, and were baptized because of the difference, honestly, that it made in the disciples' lives when they saw the resurrection of Jesus. It, it changed them in such a huge, huge way that people around them noticed and says, i got to have me some of that. Okay? The 3,000 and all, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, okay? devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, that's the Word of God, okay? to fellowship, sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. They devoted themselves, not just casually, not just here and there, not just once or twice a week. They devoted themselves to it. This was top priority. Okay? They devoted themselves to those four things. And a deep sense of awe came over them. The apostles performed many miracles, signs, wonders. All the believers met together in one place. They shared everything they had. Catch this, guys. They sold their property and their possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day. Each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper. They shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. And each day, every single day, there were more and more people coming to know who Jesus was as their Lord and as their Savior because of the way the early church lived. They devoted themselves to those four things, okay? To the Word of God, to fellowship, to sharing, and to prayer. And God changed the world through it, okay? Every single day, people were coming to know Jesus because they devoted themselves to those four things, right? That is what a church is, okay? That's what a church is. So the new family, the church. So what exactly is a church? Is a church this building? No. Okay, this building is called a church building, okay, but the church itself is not this building. This is just a building where we gather, okay? A church is a group of people who turn from their sins to place full trust in Jesus as Savior and Lord. It doesn't say a group of people from Angleton, Texas. It doesn't say a group of people from the Holy Land, Jerusalem. It just says a group of people group of people who have turned from their sins and placed full trust in Jesus. Okay? So that means every single person across the face of this earth that has put their faith into Jesus Christ and accepted him as Lord and Savior, they are part of this new family that you have, the church. They are part of it. And you are part of it as well when you give your life over to Jesus. So what does this mean for you and for me? Okay? What does this mean for you and for me? How, how do we go about being the church? Because according to that definition we just had, you and I are the church. Okay? We've got responsibilities. We've got roles. We've got things that we are supposed to do. What is that? Number one, obviously the first thing is you have to believe in Jesus. Okay? You have to believe in who Jesus is, who Jesus was, what Jesus did, how he lived his life, his death, and his resurrection. You have to believe in that. Okay? And not just like, oh, hey, no, I, I, you know, I believe we're here in this room. Okay? Yeah, we are. Okay? But I have full faith and trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord, as my Savior. Okay? So number one, we have to believe in Jesus. Put our faith and trust into him. Okay? And number two, we follow that with baptism. We've done it a lot here recently, which is great. Okay? For the last, what, four out of five Sundays we've had here, we've been baptizing people. Um, and it's been amazing. I think we've got another one coming this Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. So if you haven't been baptized yet and you're ready to get baptized, um, you can join with us this week. Okay? But they're baptized. Okay? But as we say, remember, baptism is not what saves you. It's not necessary for salvation, but it was a commandment of God. 
okay, to, to go to tell people about Jesus and baptize them, okay? It's not required to be saved, but it's that outward expression that we're saying, hey, I have given my life to Jesus, and now I'm telling everybody else about it through this baptism. I'm dying to my old self as you go under, and I'm coming back up to new life in Jesus Christ. So you believe in Jesus, and you get baptized, okay? And then, guys, this is, this is where so many people get stuck, okay? You join the group, okay? When I join a group, I get in that group. I get involved in that group, okay? Whether it is your football team or your flag team or your, your band group, whatever it is, Color when you, you know, <laughs> whatever. Sorry. Color guard, okay? You throw flags around, okay? Um, you just do it very... You know, you just do it way better. You do it way better than I could. So, okay, but you can't. But let you. Know, you can't say. You know what? Okay, I'm gonna go out part of color guard, and I'm gonna show up for the performances once a week. You can't do that, can you? You can't. You can't say, hey, I'm gonna be on the. I'm gonna be on the football team, but I'm only gonna come on game day. Okay, you wouldn't be playing at all, would you? The coach would probably say, um, no, sorry, you can leave now. But but see see the see the relation here, guys. Okay, we'll we'll go to practice every single day and then go to those games. We're part of that group. We've joined that group. We are there. We are committed to that. When you join, you give your life to Jesus. You are to join a church. You are to be a part of that church. Okay, you're part of that body, meaning that you are there. As often as you possibly can, meaning that you know the other people on, it's like you know the other people on your team or, or in your color guard um, or the band. You know the people in your section, okay? You may you're closer to the people in your section than you are to the whole team, but you still know the whole team or the whole group, okay? Um, you joined it. You are a part of it. You go. You participate. You help other people. They help you. When you become a Christian, you are to join a church and be a part of that. To be serving alongside of other people, be worshiping along other side of people, praying for, praying with people, um, you know, or to be a part of that group. And so many people are just saying, oh, you know what, I can come to worship service once a week. Isn't that good enough? No, that's a social club. Okay? <laughs> it really is. It's a social You're not part of that group. Because you're, you're there basically just to make yourself feel good about going to church. Okay? To join it means you're a part of that group. You belong to it, just like everybody else does. So you're invested into it. All right? Join the church. Join the group. All right, number four. The church spends time learning. Now, I should have put on there individual time. Because, guys, meeting like this is wonderful. This is awesome. This is great. But if you're not learning on your own, okay, you're you're fighting you're fighting a battle on a, unarmed. Just telling. I mean, you are. You can't come to church on Wednesday nights and maybe even on Sunday morning, and that be the only time that you open the Word of God, the only time that you talk to God. You can't let that be that way. Because you are in a spiritual battle. It happens 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And if the only time that you open your word, open the word of God, or you pray, is when you're at church, you're going out into battle the other five days a week, completely unarmed, and with no protection on. And you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, you're going to feel horrible, you're going to just get run over by Satan, because he's coming after you. So you've got to be learning on your own, you've got to be opening the word of God, you've got to be listening to Christian podcasts. So I turn off the secular music and put on Christian music because you know what? It's based off of Scripture. Easiest way to learn the Bible is to listen to Christian music and let the Word of God get into your brain through music. Okay? Turn off that secular stuff. It's junk. Okay? There's nothing good about it. Be learning. Okay? Find ways to be around the Word of God as much as possible. There's plenty of great Christian podcasts and YouTubers um, and TikTokers, um, you know, if you want to be on social media, at least be on the good stuff. Okay? You spend your time learning. Okay? Then five, the church takes part in fellowship. And again, this is where a lot of people go, 
Well, I go to the meals. Okay. Okay. As Baptists, boy, we're great. You know, we eat together a lot. It's just that fellowship. That's part of fellowship. But the biblical definition for fellowship is you know what's going on in my life. I know what's going on in your life. The good, the bad, the ugly, everywhere in between. We know it all. Okay? And we're praying for each other. We're praying with each other. We're helping hold each other accountable. Um, you know, somebody says, man, I've got, I've got a need. Well, we drop everything and we go help take care of that need. That's biblical fellowship. Always being there for each other and knowing each other forward and backwards, inside and out, knowing everything about the struggles that we got going on. Hey, I'm going to help you walk through that. I may not have the same one, but I've got struggles too, so we're going to work on this together. You know, man, you just had a great victory. Awesome. I'm going to celebrate with you. Okay? That's biblical fellowship. You take part in the fellowship with the rest of the church. All right, what else do we do? We pray together. Oh, man, I wish we could do this more. Or I wish we did this more. Okay? When a church prays together, the church grows strong. You know, Sean is, I mean, man, he, he, leads a, he leads a prayer service here every Wednesday night. It's amazing how fast you can clear out a building when we say we're going to have a prayer service. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and it's, it's not just First Baptist Church of Angleton, guys. It's everywhere. Um, if you say we're going to have a prayer service on Wednesday night at, at 6 o'clock, um, you know, you'd be lucky to get 10% of your church to show up. But if you say, hey, we're going to have a meal, it's free, everybody come, well, there's going to be a whole lot of people that will come for that. But if you say we're going to get together, we're going to pray, people find excuses not to be there. Um, and it's really sad when that's the number one way to have access to the power of God is through prayer. And when we come together and we're in a group just like this, we say, you know, man, I'm, I'm struggling right now. I'm hurting. I need some support. I need some prayer. Right there in that group, you know, in the group, like, man, there's 20 people praying for you immediately like that. You feel the power of God immediately into your life. Um, it's one of those things that we, it's so simple and so easy to do, but the church neglects it. And that's why so many churches are dying today. So many churches close every single week because they really stopped praying. They stopped praying together. Uh, so I'm um, sure I uh, love the fact that, that Sean takes prayer seriously. You know, we pray together as a staff every single week. Uh, we talk about things that are going on in the life of the church, but we always start, we always end with prayer because we know that is essential for anything and everything. If God's not involved, if he's not part of what we're doing, then we're just wasting our time and our energy and our resources. When we pray, we bring God into the situation. We do our best to follow his will. Things go much, much better. But we got to pray together. All right? Um, if, you're, if you're not praying, you need to start. All right? And number seven, the church meets regularly as a group for worship. And guys, regularly is not once or twice a month. Regularly should be once or twice, should be two, three times a week. Okay? There are a lot of countries, man, people still meet every single day together. Just like that we talked about there in Acts, we read it. I just said, every single day they got together. Right? Whether they met in the, uh, they met in the temple or they met in somebody's house, the church met every single day to fellowship together, to, to read the, the teachings, to pray together. Every single day they did it. We've got to be getting together more than just once a week. We've got to be doing this more than just a couple times a month. Regularly means as often as possible. Getting together as a group for Bible study, for prayer, for worship. Right? We need that. We need it. Um, that's what the church does. Okay? All right, then the church shares their possessions to meet the needs of each member in the family. Okay? Oof. In today's society, this is a, this is one of the this is one of the really, really, really tough ones. Because we're, we're we're selfish, let's just be honest. I got what I got. And I worked hard to get this, or maybe I just whined and complained enough to mom and dad, and then went ahead and got it for me. Um, you know, we don't we, we don't we don't look at somebody and go, man. I've noticed that person's wearing the same clothes, basically. That you, you just tell. I mean, can't you guys you go to school? You see this person who wears the same two or three outfits over and over and over again. Sometimes that's because that's just their favorite outfit. It's comfortable. It fits them. They feel good in that. But most of the time, it's because that's all they have. You ever look at someone like that and go, 
man, I wonder what's really going on. Mm -hmm. You ever look at someone like that and say, I wonder if they have anything else at home. Right? There's many times, I mean, every single time I've been to Nicaragua on a mission trip, we go down there and we bring clothes to people because they'll take us into the, <laughs> they'll take us into their, their, their houses that are held up by a tree branch that they cut down and their, their tarps are their walls and their roof. Okay? And they'll take us to their bedrooms and they'll show us, hey, here's my clothes. And it's usually one pair of pants, one or two pairs of shorts, a couple shirts, no socks, maybe a pair of flip-flops, maybe. That's all they have. That's it. There's people around us who have needs, but we're so focused on ourselves so much of the time that we miss the fact that people who have needs. We look for opportunities to share with other people. I mean, you know, maybe you are one of the people who has needs where you're just, sometimes, you know, things get rough in a family and money gets super, super tight and you have a need, but we're too prideful to admit that. So I just want to let you know, if you ever have a need, anything like that, you can come to me privately. I will not share it. I will not shame you. I will not, you know, do anything to judge you whatsoever because I've been there. I've been there with my family to where we've literally had to go to our church and say, hey, if you don't help us, I don't know what's going to happen. We may not be in our house much longer. Um, I've been there. Okay. So I can feel your pain. I can feel what's going on and I want to help. All right. Um, if you're in that situation, just talk to me privately. Talk to any of these adults privately. Um, let us help you. If you know somebody who's in that situation. Um, talk to us. We'll see what we can do. Can't promise anything. We'll definitely do the very best that we can. Our church has been blessed. We like to bless other people. Okay? And the last thing that the church does, the church regularly adds new believers. Regularly adds new believers to the group. Remember back in that passage we read in Acts chapter 2, 3,000 people in one day gave their life to Jesus. And those people devoted themselves to the word of God, right, to meetings together, excuse me, sorry, uh, to fellowship, to, <laughs> to prayer, all those types of things, they devote themselves to that. And the Lord added to their numbers every single day, people getting saved, okay? There's no reason why we can't get back to that, y'all. There is no reason why we can't get back to every single week we come in here, there's somebody new who gives their life to Jesus. Um, you know, there's no reason why we can't. But the two things that hold up the church is that we're not devoting ourselves to those things that the early church did. We're not devoting ourselves to it. And number two, we're just, we're not inviting people to come with us. Okay. I know some of you have really tried. I know you have. Okay? Don't stop. Don't stop. You may be running into a cold spell where everybody just seems to say no and you can get very, very down. You can get just, man, this really, really stinks. Why can't I get anybody to come with me? But you don't stop. You don't stop. Here's the thing. Have, have, you, have you devoted yourselves to reading your Bible, to praying? to meeting at church as often as possible. Have you devoted yourself to that? Really devoted yourself to it? You've got a friend who you really care about who is lost? Are you praying for that friend? Before you go and invite them to church, get up in the morning, pray for that person or those people. Pray for them that God would soften their hearts and God would open their lives to, to that. You know, and to be honest, sometimes you say, okay, God... One of the best things you can do is say, God, open my eyes to see my friends who are really searching for you right now. Who are really searching for an answer to life's problems. And when you do that, you'll start to see people a little bit differently. And you'll see those people who really do need Jesus. And when you walk up to that person and say, hey, why don't you come to church with me tonight or tomorrow or whenever it is, they usually jump at the occasion. Sure, no problem. That sounds good. But you know what? They're already 
searching for something. God's already at work in their lives. But we have to stop, we have to pray, we have to ask God to show us, and then we need to make sure we keep our eyes open as we're going throughout our day. Um, so there is a process to it. But number one, if you're not devoted to the Word of God, you're not devoted to meeting together at church, and you're not devoted to prayer, it's going to be real hard. It's going to be hard. But when you devote yourself to those things, it's amazing how God just opens door after door after door after door for you. And people in your life start looking for Jesus, and they find him through you. Okay? So, this is what a church does. What next? We're going to talk about that more next week. All right? Um, let's pray, and we're, we're a little early, so that, that's really fine. Um, but uh, as long as we can get everything cleaned up right in here, then we'll break out some of the pie um, in celebration of Lexi and Colby's birthdays this week. Uh, we'll break out some pie. Um, I think I have enough for everybody to have a piece. So um, it's caramel apple pie, by the way. Um, so people think this time of year is all about pumpkin spice. No. For me, uh, for me, it's, it's caramel apple. apples, baby. Oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, you see, key line pie through a wall. No. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh. Oh. It may not be your fault, but it's my fault. Okay. I love caramel apples. Um, I love them since I was a kid. Okay. And I don't. So I'm not lunch day, right? I'm not having an apple. I need my apple. The apple has weird bumps on it. I just posted it. Weird bumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, how easy to get off track? Let me break. All right, let me break, and then uh, we'll go back there. Well, we'll sing happy birthday to Lexi and Colby. And then we will, after we pray, and then we'll go get some pie to celebrate. Okay? Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for uh, just. The chance to be here together with these amazing people in this room. Thank you, God, for your word and how it shows us clearly what we're supposed, what we're supposed to devote ourselves to and what we're not supposed to. Uh, God, I pray that we would devote ourselves uh, to reading your word, Father God, to being in fellowship with each other, uh, Father God, to being in prayer and to sharing the love of Jesus as often as possible. I pray that we would devote ourselves to that. And Father God, I pray that you would just start a revival uh, here in this community with this group of amazing uh, teenagers here in this room, I pray that they would become bold, unashamed of you, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they would share it as often as possible. But more importantly, I pray that their lives would show Jesus as they walk down the hallways, as they're interacting with family and friends and co-workers. God, I pray that Jesus is, is just exemplified through them, and people see the difference that you make in their lives. Um, and so we'll, when we have friends who are, who are around us, Friends, family members who need Jesus, God, I pray that we would be praying for them um, dearly. Pray, pray for them every single day. And God, that you would open those doors just to invite them to come to church and, and be here and be a part of what you're doing. Be a part of this amazing body of believers that we have here. Um, God, I just pray that there would be a Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit-filled revival that would just break out um, because you are changing people and you are drawing people to the church, to yourself, to salvation through Jesus. Uh, we can't do anything without you, so we ask, we plead, we cry out, we beg, whatever you want, God, we do it. We ask that you just um, go before us, prepare the way for us, make us bold and confident so that we can tell others about Jesus everywhere we go, as you command us to do. I pray that you would help these kids just have a, uh, finish their week strong, have a great rest of their week, and uh, Father God, may all we say and do give you glory and honor. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so I'm going to go get the pie. You all make sure your, your trash is picked up, uh -huh. thrown away. Clipboards, clipboards, pans go over there. I think my wife We'll get. It's early. I need a fan.